Hey, what's up guys? Back again for another book review. We're banging these uh, babies out. Next book by the man himself. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this book. If not already read it, Awaken the Giant Within by Mr. Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins. Okay, take immediate control of your mental, emotional, physical, and financial destiny. Are you in charge of your life? Or are you being swept away by things that are seemingly out of your control? In Awaken the Giant Within, Anthony Robbins, the best-selling author of Unlimited Power, shows the reader how to take immediate control of their mental, emotional, physical, and financial destiny. Okay, he's got reviews from Stephen Covey, Andre Agassi, as well as Time Out. Okay, so I'll read some of the... Uh, the, the chapters you can tell this is a pretty you know decently thick book so part one is about unleashing your power part two is about taking control of the master system part three is the seven days to shape your life part four is a lesson in destiny okay now personally myself this book it, it's got like a lot of small words okay so and it's about yeah, it's over 500 pages. So I highly recommend, like if you're not like the biggest reader, um, yeah, go on Audible, get like a free Audible account trial. It'll give you like one free book. Or if you already have Audible, highly recommend, you know, just getting this as the audio book. Cause I personally love hearing whenever Tony Robbins speaks cause his voice is so powerful, right? It's like you remember it. So. I totally recommend, again, getting the audio version of this because, yeah, you'll, you'll like it, enjoy it a lot more. But anyways, as always, I will pick pick the, the page. <laughs> Just so happens to be the beginning of a chapter. So chapter eight, questions are the answer. He who asks questions cannot avoid the answers. They needed no reason. They came simply because he was of Jewish descent. The Nazis stormed into his home, arresting him and his entire family. Soon they were herded like cattle, packed into a train, and then sent to a death camp in Krakow. His most disturbing nightmares could have never have prepared him for seeing his family shot before his very eyes. How could he live through the horror of seeing his child's clothing on another because his son was now dead as a result of a shower? Somehow he continued. One day he looked at the nightmare around him and confronted him an inescapable truth. If he stayed there even one more day, he would surely die. He made a decision that he must escape and that escape must happen immediately. He knew not how, he simply knew he must. For weeks he'd ask the other prisoners, how can we escape this horrible place? The answers he received seemed to always be the same. Don't be a fool, they said. There is no escape. Asking such questions will only torture your soul. Just work hard and pray you survive. But he couldn't accept this. He wouldn't accept it. He became obsessed with escape. And even when his answers didn't make any sense, he kept asking over and over again, how can I do it? There must be a way. How can I get out of here healthy alive today? Is it, it is said that if you ask, you shall receive. And for some reason on this day, he got his answer. Perhaps it was the intensity with which he asked his question, or maybe it was a sense of certainty that now is the time. Or possibly it was just the impact of continually focusing on the answer to one burning question. For whatever reason, the giant power of the human mind and spirit awakened in this man. The answer came to him through an unlikely source, the sickening smell of a decaying human flesh. There are only a few feet, feet, only a few feet from his work, he saw a huge pile of bodies that had been shoveled into the back of a truck. Men, women, children who had been gassed. The gold fillings had been pulled from their teeth. Everything that they owned, any jewelry, even their clothing had been taken. Instead of asking, how could the Nazis be so despicable or destructive? How could God make something so evil? Why has God done this to me? Uh, Stanislavski Lech asked a different question. He asked, how can I use this to escape? And instantly he got his answer. As the end of the day neared and the work party headed back into the barracks, Lech ducked behind the truck. In a heartbeat, he ripped 
off his clothes and dove naked into the pile of bodies while no one was looking. He pretended that he was dead, remaining totally still even though later he was almost crushed as more and more bodies were heaped on top of him. The fetid smell of rotting flesh, the rigged remains of the dead, surrounded him everywhere. He waited and waited, hoping that no one would notice the one living body in that pile of death, hoping that sooner or later the truck would drive off. Finally, he heard the sound of the engine starting. He felt the truck shudder, and in that moment he felt a stirring of hope as he lay among the dead. Eventually, he felt the truck lurk to a stop. And then it dumped its ghastly cargo, dozens of the dead and one man pretending to be one of them, in a giant open grave outside the camp. Lech remained there for hours until nightfall when he finally felt uncertain no one was there. He extracted himself from the mountain of cadavers and he ran naked 25 miles to freedom. What was the difference between Stanislavski and Lech, that's a crazy name, and so many others who perished in the concentration camps? While, of course, there were many factors, one critical difference was that he asked a different question. He asked persistently. He asked with expectation of receiving an answer, and his brain came up with a, solu with a solution that saved his life. The questions he asked himself that day in Krakow caused him to make split-second decisions that led to actions that significantly impacted his destiny. But before he could get the answer, make the decisions, and take those actions, he had to ask himself the right questions. Throughout this book, you've learned about how our beliefs affect our decisions, our actions, the direction of our lives, and therefore our ultimate destiny. But all these influences are a product of thinking, of the way your brain has evaluated and created meaning throughout your entire life. So to get to the bottom of how we create our reality on a daily basis, we need to answer the question, just how do we think? So you can tell this is a very deep book. Tony's always great with his stories. Um, yeah, I, I don't recommend reading this starting out if you're, if you're getting into personal development. Maybe like a few books in, I highly recommend, but anything by Tony Robbins is always going to be a great read in my opinion. And yeah, highly recommend it. Really great read.